Your financial literacy is an important part of your overall education. The first step in developing financial literacy is establishing your financial goals. There are five basic financial goals that are important in building a strong financial foundation. Live within your means. Establish and maintain good credit. Repay student loans on schedule. Establish an emergency fund. And establish a retirement fund. Goal number one is live within your means. To live within your means, you don't spend more than what you have. To help you accomplish this, it is important to establish a budget and manage that budget. A budget in its simplest terms lists money coming in, when and how much, and expenses, when they are due and how much they are. If your expenses are larger than your money coming in, you will soon end up in a financial hole. If you create a spreadsheet of your budget and follow it to the best of your ability, you will be well on your way to living within your means. Goal number two is establish and maintain good credit. Good credit is a combination of your ability to pay your bills and your track record of having done it on time. This is reflected in a credit score, a record of your past spending behavior that indicates your ability to repay current obligations. Having good credit can make it easier for you to do such things as getting approved for a lease on an apartment, buying a car, applying for a credit card or a loan, and a variety of other things. Also, it will save you money. The better your credit score, the more favorable the borrowing terms may be on some of these things. So how do you do this? Remember, it doesn't happen overnight. The best way is to start building credit slowly. Make sure that you pay all of your obligations on time. This will translate into being considered a reliable borrower. Goal number three is repay student loans on schedule. Your student loans are usually the first form of debt that you will have. Staying on top of your payments can help you climb the credit ladder. Also, staying current with all of your payments will help you avoid additional fees and interest that will be charged to you if your payments are late. Where can you turn for help with your student loans? The U.S. Department of Education has great resources to help you understand all of your repayment options and can even help you plan your budget for making your payments. Check out their website, www.studentaid.gov, and then search for repayment plans for more information. As an example, income contingent repayments allows flexibility on how much you need to pay based on your actual income, family size, and amount borrowed. If you do find yourself falling behind on payments, you might want to consider forbearance, which is an option that allows you to stop making payments for a period of time while you get back on your feet. Goal number four is establish an emergency fund. An emergency fund is a safety net. Everyone has an emergency at one time or another. Loss of job, car wreck, pandemic. A safety net can make the difference between a manageable situation and a crisis. If you don't have a separate bank account just for emergencies, it is a good idea to open one now. Generally, a good rule of thumb is to calculate your living expenses for at least three months and make that your target for an emergency fund. If you don't have that amount of money, try to put away whatever amount you can spare. The important thing is to keep the fund intact. Don't spend it except in the case of emergencies. When you have to draw it down for an emergency, as soon as possible, build the fund back up for the next emergency. Goal number five is establish a retirement fund. It is important to establish a retirement fund as early in your working life as possible so the fund has time to grow over your life and help support you in your retirement. The most common retirement funds are 401k and 403b plans. A 401k plan is a retirement savings account that allows employees to divert a portion of their salary into long-term investments. A 403b plan is a retirement account for certain employees at places such as public schools and tax-exempt organizations. Both of these plans are eligible for special tax benefits under IRS guidelines. It is important to know that you cannot withdraw this money without a tax penalty until you are age 59 and a half. Many employers match the employee's contribution up to a limit, which is free money for the employee. Look into this, and if offered by your employer, make sure you sign up. A good rule of thumb for retirement savings is to save 10% or more of your gross salary. If you start early enough, given the time your money has to grow and salary increases over time, 10% may add up to a very nice retirement fund. 
If 10% is too much for you, save whatever you can. If you start saving later in life, you may need to increase your contribution amount above 10% to make up for lost time. In summary, to build a strong financial foundation, it is important for you to be financially literate, keeping in mind the five goals we have just reviewed.